Well, when I was practicing this uh, at 11.30pm uh, last night, uh, staring at a wall, uh, it doesn't do any justice to what you actually get when you're standing in front of an audience. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is a big deal for me. I've been wanting to speak at WordCamp for, uh, for quite a few years. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I got in this time because uh, somebody called in sick. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, yeah, I made them sick. No, I didn't. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is kind of a big deal for me because uh, this is the first time I've actually spoken at a WordCamp, so it's um, kind, of, kind of cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I'm very mindful of time, and I tend, to, uh, I tend to just waffle. I've been told that a lot, so I should just move along. Um, and uh, I've got beautiful timekeepers here, so they'll keep me on track. Um, anyway, okay, so uh, welcome to my presentation. I, uh, I'm going to be going through uh, for the next 30 to 35 minutes, hopefully less than that, but um, we'll see. I'm going to take you through uh, 10 things that uh, you know, your WordPress website can do that you may not know it can do. Uh, now, we know that WordPress is uh, quite a fantastic content management system. You can build beautiful websites with it. But there are plugins that can extend the functionality of your website beyond your, your mind, can it, you know, blow your mind. So anyway, there's two objectives that I have for this um, presentation. The first one is to blow your mind and to get you to the point of saying, ah, well, you can do that, cool. Um, and the second thing is, see, this, see that little rocket up on the screen there? Yeah, yeah. we gotta get that rocket to the planet, okay? And if you look closely at the, if you look closely at the rocket, uh, you'll see a little WordPress logo, okay? That's a flag. So we gotta get the rocket to the planet and pitch the flag on the planet, okay? That's the second objective. So does that sound all right? Yes, thank you. All right, let's get into this, shall we? So, who am I? Hi, I'm Paul. Um, I do three things, uh, try and keep things simple. I'm a dad and stuff like that, but this is my businessy sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, like Ingrid said, I run um, a company called Gold Coast Business Websites, uh, where we build web WordPress websites, teach people how to build them and manage them, and, um, and we also do ad hoc and all that sort of jazz with uh, websites. Uh, I also uh, look after another brand called WP Genie, uh, which is a WordPress website care service. Uh, so I've just extended that on, and it's the typical, you know, you sign up for a monthly subscription um, and you get uh, wishes. Um, so you get additional tasks with the particular plans that you sign up with. It's pretty neat. Check it out. The other thing I do is I uh, organize and co-host the WordPress Gold Coast Meetup. So if you are in Southport on the Gold Coast next Thursday and you're just driving down Ferry Road at around 6 p.m., then pop into the tavern, the Ferry Road Tavern, uh, where you can join other WordPress like-minded people and uh, learn more about your WordPress website. I highly recommend you coming along to that. So uh, yeah, that, that runs on the very last Thursday of every month, and it's completely free. Thank goodness for our, uh, our sponsors, Kinetics, WP Engine, and WP Australia. Couldn't do it without those guys, so kudos to those guys, thank you. All right, so that's me. Let's get cracking, shall we, into the 10 things that your website can do that maybe you didn't know that it could, yeah? So with any one to 10, we always start with number one, one right? So let's have, let's have some fun. All right, number one, turn your website into a proposal generating machine. All right, who here, hands up, be honest. Uh, do you guys, uh, who sends proposals out using PDFs? Right, cool. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. 
But I encourage you to have a look at maybe just changing your mindset a little bit and changing the way that you send your proposals. Uh, and I was doing the exact same thing up until the end of last year. And I started um, utilizing my website as a way to send my proposals. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, and the first way that you can do this is to install WP Proposals. It's a plugin. It's totally free. It's totally awesome. And what that does is it puts a, a new post type into your dashboard menu, as you can see on the menu, uh, on the arrow. Uh, and that allows you to create proposals on your website. So um, just like adding a page or a post, you can then create a proposal. And then you fill out all the fields, like the customer name and all the, um, all the ingredients of what you're offering uh, in your proposal. And then you hit publish. And then that sends an email to the client with a link that they click on, and then they get taken to your website uh, with the details of the proposal. Now, it knocks the header and the footer out, so it just creates a nice, um, a nice sort of, uh, you know, like a, a nice sort of template. Um, and then they can, uh, and then the customer can just put their email in at the bottom to accept, and we're done. Very easy. So I used to send out uh, like PDFs, and then you know the clients would have to you know get it on their phones, and they would read through it, and then they'd have to pinch and zoom in to have a look, and um, and then they had to they had to actually print off the last page of the proposal to sign the agreement. Um, so to print it off, sign it, and then they would take a photo, or they'd scan it in, and then send it back to me. And that that takes a lot of time. So having your proposal system on your website can really save time. And I must say that since I, uh, I integrated this into my website at the beginning of this year, I've had at least, I'm being probably quite uh, humble here, but yeah, probably about a 50% uptake in my proposal acceptance just by changing that one little thing. So I'm not using this plugin. I've done it a different way. I've gotten um, a couple of other plugins to help me build my own custom uh, post type, and this is what mine looks. This is what mine looks like. Uh, so on the left, you can see that um, yeah, I've just got a, a proposal post type, and then it's just like adding a, a normal post editor to your uh, to your website, and then I've got some fields. So client name and proposal date, the total investment. And I keep mine really simple. I've just got bullet points, lists of what's included in the proposal. And that's all I have. And then what I use is I use a page builder called Elementor to build out the template. Um, and then I, I use a couple of plugins to build the custom post type. And one of them is called Custom Post Type UI, which creates the custom post type, which creates the proposal post type. And then I use uh, Advanced Custom Fields Pro to use to, to build the, the fields. And then I, yeah, I integrate the, the short codes from the Advanced Custom Fields, and then I put that on the template, and then voila, it just, it all works really well. I won't go into great detail about it, but. But I tell you what, it is amazing. I've spoken to my clients, and they love it. They love getting these proposals. And as I said, I get, I've, I've gotten a, a pretty big increase in, in the acceptance rate. So that's number one. Let's move on to number two. All right, this is pretty cool. Personalized website content. So there's nothing greater than hearing our own name. We know that, right? So we love the sound of our own name. Um, so when you, uh, so with this idea is that you, uh, you can create content uh, and direct it to specific people. Um, so you can personalize it. So you can say, hi, Bob, or hi, John, or whatever, um, whatever the person's name is. And there's a really cool plugin that allows you to do this really, really easily. Um, 
and it is called the get params plugin. All right? And what that does is it allows you to create a shortcut. Well, it creates a shortcode for you, and then you just pop that into uh, where you want it to go. So you might have, you know, happy birthday, Mary, something like that, or happy birthday, um, and then the short code. Then what you do is you create a, well, you create a link, just like you see on the example there. So you've got your website address, the page name, and then you've got a query string. Does everybody know what a query string is? All right, well, that's a query string. So you've got um, where it's got the, uh, the question mark and then param name equals John. So what you do is if the person that you're sending the personalized content to is called John, then you would send them that link, okay, in its entirety. Or if it's Michelle, you'd send it to a, uh, you'd change John to Michelle, or um, whatever. Um, so then what you can do is you can create things like this. <laughs> so I've since, so this is how this is what I've done. I've created a, a template using Elementor. Um, I've got happy birthday, the words, and then I've got the short code, which you saw on the previous slide. I've got that next to uh, next to happy birthday. And then I've put my little message and then I send the, uh, the query string that I, I showed you there. So my, web, my, my website address and the page name, and then the um, question mark param name equals Michelle, as you can see on there. And then basically the query string takes the name from the query string and replaces the short code with the name that's in the query string. So it's really, sorry? Uh, you could, yeah. I mean, the, the absolutely, yeah. You can do definitely do that. You can have video. You can like that that uh, that background of the balloons is just a YouTube video, and I've just got that on loop, so it's pretty easy. Um, so that's number two. Let's move on to number three. All right. Anybody who is interested in the blockchain technology. Blockchain, anybody? Yeah, anybody heard of it or not heard of it? Yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing, it's a big thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, number three, your blog's on the blockchain. Has anybody heard of Steemit? No? Oh, hello. Woohoo! <laughs> um, cool. Uh, yeah, she's a plant, no. <laughs> um, Steemit is a, uh, is a website where you can uh, create content and get paid for that content from the community. So we call these uh, micropayments. And, uh, and you get paid in cryptocurrency, uh, other, also known as Steam dollars, I think. Yeah, Steemit. Um, so the, the idea of this is that you would, you would create blog posts on your website, right? You're going to do that anyway. So with this particular plugin called Steampress, you can set it up so that when you post a blog on your website, it can automatically be uh, pushed to your Steemit account. And then if you know, people really like your content and they love it, they'll upvote you by paying you in cryptocurrency. And then you can take that cryptocurrency, put it on an exchange, sell it, and actually make money from your blogging content. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Um, so you've heard of medium.com? Yeah. Um, so it's similar to that, where you, know, you put a blog post up and, um, and people clap, I think it is. Or, um, so yeah, it's basically the same as that, but you get actually paid for your content. So Steampress allows you to blog on your website, and it then forwards that blog over to your Steemit account um, and then puts the blog over there where you can potentially get paid, which is pretty neat. So you need a Steemit account. Uh, just install the Steampress plugin. 
and then you configure the settings to the blog content to then steam it. And I'll show you a screenshot what I mean here. So there's your blog, and then you got like a, it puts a little option there to then uh, tick box to then forward to steam it. And that's it. So uh, there's, there's roughly around about 1.4 million active members on steam it. Something like that, yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool, and it's growing. All right, so let's move on. Number four, marketing automation in your dashboard. This is pretty awesome. Um, anybody heard of Groundhog? Groundhog? <laughs> Groundhog Day, yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray, love that movie. Um, well, Groundhog is a, uh, it's a fairly new plugin, I guess. Sort of newish on the scene. Uh, but it allows you to uh, set up email funnels directly in your dashboard. So similar to what you know, Active Campaign and those other like GetDrip and all those um, other third-party services that you can use to um, create um, more complex funnels uh, or email marketing sequences or automation. Um, Groundhog basically simplifies all that and creates uh, its own user interface within your dashboard. And then you can set up triggers and all sorts of stuff that send out emails um, when somebody does something. So uh, you can manage and store your own list. So you're not, uh, you're not at the mercy of, uh, of the third party services. Uh, so you can actually control your own list completely and, and have control, uh, complete ownership over it. Um, and uh, you can save money on using external third party services as well. Now, of course, Groundhog is you know, very simple. If you need more complex stuff, then you would go and use ActiveCampaign or the other big, the bigger uh, sort of players. But if you're just starting out and you just want to you know, tip, uh, dip your toe into automation, or if you've got like an e-commerce site and you've just started out, then this is a good starting ground because um, it works well with all major e-commerce platforms as well, like uh, WooCommerce and, um, and others as well. So this is a screenshot of just an example funnel that you can set up. So this one here is just basically, you know, you create a form and then when somebody fills out the form, uh, an email is then sent. Uh, so they might fill out a form to download something of value, like a PDF or a whatever. Um, and then you trigger that and you send them the email with the PDF. Uh, and then you can set up other uh, actions to, to deal with that, that person. So then if you, so if you have an email that gets sent to them and they say, you know, click on this email, takes them back to the website, a landing page, and then it says, here's your download link. And then you can actually uh, then trigger another, another email like two days later uh, using this system to say, hey, you know, what do you think of the PDF? Um, and then you can set up other triggers, like say another two days later after that, send another email. So it's pretty cool. I, I encourage you to check it out if you want to sort of get into this. Um, yes. It's free. Capital letters. <laughs> Get it now. Download it. Yeah, it's on, it's on the WordPress repository. So yeah, it is pretty neat. It, again, it, it is limited. There are limitations to it. So just be, uh, just be wary of that. All right, number five. <coughs> Gotta get moving. OK, make your forms work harder for you, people. All right, what do I mean by this? So. Um, there's, uh, there's so many times that I've come along uh, websites and, you know, when I'm looking at a website and, I, uh, and the cl my clients ask me to, you know, look over it, um, one of the big things I check is, does the contact form work? That's a really important thing um, because sometimes they don't work. They stop working. Um, so, but most of the time I find that when I'm, when I'm testing these uh, contact forms, uh, I put in my details, you know, hit the send button, 
And then like a little message comes up underneath that says, your form is submitted. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> what does that mean? You know? Did it really get sent? You know, what happens next? You know? Will I get you know, fanfare from the people that I sent the email to? Will I, you know, will, will I get a call like, you know, two minutes later? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I don't know. Um, so this is what I mean by make your forms work harder for you. So please, ensure that all your forms have at least a thank you page that takes them to another page after they submit that says, thanks. Ah, and guess what? You've already learned. You can personalize these thank you pages as well. So you can thank the person uh, by taking their first name that they put into the form and put it onto the thank you page. So thanks, Bob. While you're waiting for us to get back to you, why don't you check out our FAQ page where most of our commonly asked questions are? Or, hey, why don't you download our 50 page PDF on how you should get your contact forms working better for you? <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, please, so please, people, please, I implore you, just at least set up a thank you page, a next step. A thing that just says, hey, we acknowledge you. We've got your message, and we're going to get back to you. At least something. All right? OK, um, I've got another point here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can add additional upsells and offers to those thank you pages as well, which is pretty cool. So you can you know, say, hey, why don't you sign up for our 17-minute uh, strategy session, something like that. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's move on. Number six, create DIY landing sales pages. There is no excuse for you to not use your WordPress website to house your landing pages. You know, yes, you can go and use other services, which I will not name. You know who I'm talking about. You know. You know. But there is no excuse that you can't use your own website to house your own landing pages. In fact, you could create a custom post type using custom post type UI and advanced custom fields, and you can, uh, well, you, wouldn't, you may not even need to use that, but you could create your own landing pages within your own site, so then you can direct traffic to your site, to your landing pages. Um, and there are a host of plugins that will help you build beautiful landing pages, such as Elementor, Brizzy, Site Origin, Beaver Builder, and can anybody guess what the next one is? Boom! Gutenberg. Yes. Well done, guys. Well done. So yeah, there's no excuse. Um, there's an example of probably a really poorly, badly designed landing page that is one of mine. Sorry. Um, but the important thing is, when they fill out that form, guess what happens? They go to a thank you page. Exactly. No little message that comes up saying, your form is submitted. Thank you. All right, let's move on. OK, so number seven. So from here, I'm going to get a little bit, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit unconventional now um, and a little bit weird, but um, uh, not that I've already been weird. <laughs> But there's just, there's just some slides that I put in here that are just going to whack my own head. I don't even know why I put these in, but I've just done it. So let's just do this. And can you see the rocket? The rocket's getting closer to the planet. So we're, we're on our way. So anyway, so you can use your WordPress website to go social. And what do I mean by this? You can become a Mark Zuckerberg. You can create your own social platform on your own WordPress website. So this is great for organizations, clubs, uh, anybody, anything that you know, um, brings people together. Um, and you own it. It's yours. You control it. There's no big corporation behind, behind the scenes where they can take it down, take down your page. So yeah, you could just 
do that. So Peepso, Peepso, strange name, but it's a plugin. It's totally free. Uh, you can create a social media platform right on your WordPress website. So pretty random. Yeah, pretty random. So, but cool, yeah, cool. So anybody here that would maybe use something like this? Oh, sweet, okay, cool, all right, yeah, nice, thank you, cool. Yeah, check it out. Um, all right, now, <laughs> go headless WordPress. Now this is getting a little bit technical, uh, but um, I, I read a really great comment recently uh, about this, and somebody wrote the comment um, on uh, somebody trying to explain what headless is, and then somebody wrote, uh, I'm still trying to get my head around headless WordPress. I thought it was quite funny. Um, <laughs> and I actually quite, I kind of feel the same. Uh, I've just thrown this slide in to this presentation to scare the bejeebas out of me and try and explain a kind of complex sort of thing in a simple way. So you do this to challenge yourself when you're a speaker. Um, so anyway. Uh, anybody know what headless WordPress is? Yeah? Some, yeah, cool. Did you guys want to come down and explain that? No? 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 Oh, damn it. I'll pay you. I've got some money. No, okay. Let's have a go at this. Um, so you know how WordPress is a custom management system, yeah? Or a content management system. Yeah, CMS. You know, like it creates content. You can put blog posts and pages and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and then it displays all that content on the front end, yeah? So, like, the website. Well, with headless, it's basically stripping out the front end, uh, and they call it decoupling or decouple. So you're decoupling the, uh, the back end or the content management system part of WordPress, and you're removing and stripping out the front end component, okay? How am I doing so far with this, guys? Am I going all right? Sort of? Ish? Yeah. OK. Thanks. Vote of confidence. Um, just put up like the five minute one if you want. <laughs> um, so essentially, uh, anybody heard of this thing, the REST API? It was introduced in you know, uh, WordPress 4.4 back in 2015. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. It allows developers to uh, be able to you know, get and push and post content from the WordPress ecosystem or the content management system and push it to other applications. Other applications such as React or Gatsby. I've just thrown these in because they sound really awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, and basically, so essentially you're, you're housing the content on your WordPress site and then you're uh, creating application like a, a web app or maybe a mobile app um, which is basically pulling in or um, the, the WordPress component is pushing the content to then live on that other application and there's some benefits of this and that is faster load speeds because the application that's sitting over here that's getting the data from WordPress that's not having to read a database or fetch anything from a database, thank you, uh, and it's, it's essentially then, like the content's just there, um, which is being fetched from the content management system. So how am I going with this, guys, headless guys? Head yeah, cool, thank you. So you get fast loads of bits, and of course you have a lot more flexibility and control for developers, um, which is pretty neat. And if the CMS goes down, which is WordPress, then the application stays up. It's not dependent on the content management system of WordPress. So, the, uh, so that's a really good thing as well, I would say. Yeah. So if WordPress goes down, you go fix that, and then, yeah. So how did I go, guys, with the headless stuff? Was that all right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, again, just go on Google like I did uh, at, at midnight last night um, for the, the, the 100, 100th time, uh, you know, what the heck is headless WordPress. Now, also, if you are around the Port Macquarie area next week, I think it's Thursday, is it Thursday next week? Yes. The Port Macquarie meetup group, 
they're going to be doing a thing on this where you can take your laptop and you can follow along. It's totally cool. And they're going to be doing Headless with Gatsby. Um, is that right? Cool. Yeah. Talk to Roby. He, he runs it. Um, yeah, cool. So if you're in the, in the neighborhood of Port Macquarie, then go, go to the, uh, the meetup and you'll learn more about this. Okay, I'm running out of time. So the next one is, or the ninth one, is Go Static with Hardy Press. Anybody heard of Hardy Press? Cool, nice. So Hardy Press is a, a, a service, it's kind of like a hosting platform uh, where you can go and build your website on that platform under like a staging site. Kind of similar to Cloudways, if you're familiar with Cloudways. Uh, so you'd build your site and then you would press a button in the dashboard that says publish site. And then what HardyPress does is it does its magic, does this thing uh, where it um, converts the website um, into a HTML based site. So we all know that HTML websites load faster because they don't fetch anything from the database. So all the content is there, and that's what HardyPress does. And then what it does is it puts it up on its CDN, Content Delivery Network, uh, and they've got 30 servers around the globe, um, which then deliver your website to it. So the, the main benefits of HardyPress is that load speeds are really fast. They say up to 10 times faster. Um, the website is secure, there's zero maintenance. You don't need to do any plugin or theme updates. That puts my business WP Genie out of business. Um, but you know, uh, but you've got to sort of note as well that it doesn't support dynamic websites um, that have you know shopping carts and all that sort of stuff. So it doesn't support all kinds of sites. If it's just a brochure site, very simple. Um, then you can put it up on HardyPress and you can get it loading faster and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and also it only supports Contact Form 7 as well for the Contact Forms. Sorry, gra Gravity Form lovers. So yeah. So that's HardyPress. All right, let's go to number 10. The last one, Offer Affiliation. This is a very simple, often missed opportunity here. Does everybody know what affiliation is? Have I spelt affiliation right? Yes. I don't know. Um, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so essentially, if, you've got a, uh, if you're running an e-commerce site or if you're running some sort of service where people come to the website and buy stuff, then why not, uh, why not create an affiliation, uh, an affiliate program on your website? So if you want to drive, starting to drive traffic to your site uh, and you're, you're fairly new in the market, uh, you, you know, you're trying to get your website out there, then this is a great way because you can then, you know, tell all your family and friends and say, hey, look, if you can sign up to my affiliate program on my website and, you know, share this link with all your friends and, you know, pop it up on social media, uh, then a anyone who comes to the website and they buy, then, hey, you get a commission, a commish. So, this is really cool. So there's a plugin called uh, Affiliates Manager where you can install that. It's free. There's a whole ton of other um, premium add-ons and stuff that you can pay for. Um, but you can get set up pretty easily with this particular plugin. So now, the benefits, of course, great for generating leads for e-commerce websites. Allows you to monetarily reward those who refer you uh, or refer customers to you. and um, it's a fully self-managed system, so you don't have to do anything. You can just uh, send people a link and say, hey, sign up, and, um, and it all just works. And then they can go and create a, uh, a URL that then they can send out to their, to their friends and stuff, and yeah. And that's it. Woo! Nice. So we, we, we got the rocket to the planet, and you can see that, yeah, we've got the flag. Well done, guys. Well done, we got there. Okay, we've got time for a couple of questions. Do we have some questions? Oh, One up the back here. Do you want to do the running? 
40 seconds. The gentleman with the hat. Ooh. Is that fun? Just got a question on that WP proposal thing you showed us. You showed us WP proposal, but then you quickly went on to say you made your own. Yeah. Why? Why did you not use WP proposal? Uh, because I, uh, yeah, WP proposal didn't really do what I wanted it to do. So I didn't really explain that, you know, on my proposal system, because um, on, on the WP proposal system, when you send the link, you have all the information there that you add into the, the fields of that plugin. Um, and then at the bottom, it's just, a, it's just an email field that they have to put in their email address to then accept the proposal. But I didn't want that. I wanted an actual form there with um, upsell opportunity um, and also a signature field there. So I'm using Gravity Forms on mine. Um, so I just wanted to extend it a little bit more, which um, WP proposals didn't do for me. So, um, but you know, if you're just starting out and you're, you're wanting to get away from doing the PDF stuff, then WP proposals is a great option to start with. But then you'll find, you may find that it, it limits you in some way. Did you find that you, when you said your proposals got more um, increased conversion, do you think that other people were using the same type of software and you were being disadvantaged because you were using PDFs? Uh, so, so we, you know, if you were quoting against three other companies and the other two people were using something like an online quoting, do you think you were disadvantaged because you weren't? Well, I just think that, um, yeah, it, it all came back to the user experience. And I did ask my clients this as well, who accepted the proposal. And, you know, you have to ask questions to your customers to see if what you're doing is working. Um, and one of the main key factors in their decision making was that they, they, they found me to be more professional with that, that process. Um, and they said that they got PDF uh, proposals from their other companies, um, but they found that they, you know, they, uh, having the, the technology um, and, and sort of seeing me use, utilizing the website to create these proposal systems, it gave them another tick against those other companies that weren't doing that. So, um, so yeah. That's actually a really good point. Many years ago, I was told to be your brand. And that's actually the hardest thing you can do. So if you're a web designer, having uh, being your brand and having a technology-based um, proposing or proposal system, it's just part of being your brand. There's lots of options out there. I use Proposify, and it really does make a difference for conversions. OK, any other questions? So there's one other one just behind you, this gentleman here. Hey, Jeff. Hi, hey, Paul. Uh, with WP Proposal, can you set up several different proposals on the one website to do different jobs? Like if you're doing uh, websites and then you're doing uh, Google My Business as a separate... A separate uh, well, um, you basically isn't? essentially just... Um, you, you're just creating another post. So, you know, so... Um, yeah, each... Create each, another post and put a proposal on each post. Yeah, you just okay. change the proposal type, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, so it's just, you know, if you're sending a proposal to a client that needs, I don't know, Google reviews, then you create a proposal for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have another client that uses, that wants a website, you build another proposal for sp specific to that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you now got 10 uh, topics to, for your next uh, meetups. <laughs> yeah, yes, true. Any other questions? Okay. Cool. Well, I'd like you to um, thank it, Paul again for a very, very insightful topic. I love having a bit of humour with stuff. <laughs>